Olaf Vanderbeen with Orbis. Great to have you here, man. Thanks, man. We are here, 2025 refed event. It's a great event for you because you're in the business of reducing food waste, yeah. uh, using really pretty high tech stuff. How would you describe to people what Orbis does? So this is indeed a big FOMO event for me, man. Like everything I need to see. Like we, we have an AI leveraged technology. We outfit waste bins in restaurants, like commercial kitchens all around uh, with the camera unit and a weighing scale. Mostly the camera unit uh, recognizes food of all shapes and sizes going into that waste bin uh, fully, fully seamlessly. And that allows us to see what's going to waste where and when in these commercial kitchens. So really like a bunch of tomatoes every Tuesday morning, salad bar doesn't work on Wednesday and, and uh, using and, computer vision to recognize yes. how much and then yeah. is it the chefs is it the is it the accountants who's like getting this data to change behavior yeah all of them so our, the chef gets like daily operational information right and indeed like your salad bar just doesn't work on Wednesdays that's what the chef can work like chef stocking pounds kilos uh, so they get the data to really make changes in their next day operations and then we've got the uh, accountants financial operational departments on a higher level get that data to to serve or see if they can make portfolio adjustments by the way they set up their menus like in the hotel space these are of course uh, harmonized across their their operations so that helps them to make bigger higher level decisions for instance indeed on cruise ships uh, where like something that works on one ship will also work on the others what are can you give some examples of like how this has changed behavior in a hotel in a food service food service environment when they put this in versus and then like three months later are they reducing food waste by like a certain amount of percentage yeah. Can you talk a little bit about what happens when you put it in? Okay, so there's a couple steps that generally an operation go through. So the moment you put that device in their operations, all of a sudden there's this camera that beeps around your sort of your waste bin and that sort of incentivizes every person that talk that comes to that waste bin to sort of overthink what they're doing. And generally that's already the first ten percent saved. It's magic it's just magic. They just it change their behavior because they're more conscious about it. Yeah, and it's, it doesn't even involve data, it just involves this awareness of what you're doing. And then over indeed the next year or so you start to see your first like actual data driven reductions of about 10 15 percent about after about three months and by the end of the year you'll be at 50 percent reduction over time you'll start to realize more and more and more interventions and we're really we're talking 20 30 40 thousand pounds of food uh waste food saved from being wasted in, a, in an average hotel like, so this is something that for the accountants love it because it pays for itself yeah. probably pretty quickly yeah. I don't know, a year yeah. six months like it probably happens uh, fast. If, if you look over the course of a year of course you're you, it, it's sort of it's incremental uh, if you look over a full year your ROI will be up to 10x which means that your return on investment will be after a month and a half and in today's environment we, this has been a theme of the conversations yeah. today is we're in a, an environment today where food costs have been going up like crazy yeah. uh, because of supply chain constraints because of climate change whatever tariffs um, and so this is probably something you're seeing increased demand for or are you seeing more and more people kind of say hey we need to figure out a way to stop wasting food yeah no well we we really see, do see that uh, when we started 2019 we really had to explain this to our fu future clients currently the, the market's coming to us because they're really craving for solutions because they came to realize indeed the the cost of, of the, f the food cost in itself but what's becoming more and more apparent especially at the end of chain where we're working there's so much labor ingrained in that food too they're really wasting about a day of their uh, of their yeah. chef's time per week to that so it's not bin. just the actual like oh we pay for for the meat or the and the potatoes that's going yeah. that bad it's the labor spent on this food that is thrown away yeah. that's another cost yeah we also we, we chopped it we cooked yeah, it yeah, yeah. we we baked it whatever we did with it but that's also what you're tossing into that waste bin so it's it's like and that's harder to quantify but I, the best estimate is that that sort of doubles the uh, the value of the food the labor that you've ingrained in that food so and that cost angle you know that that sort of doubles the ROI once more and then you've got your sort of CSDR, CSRD uh, type yeah. you know, responsibilities that you're covering too. So when I first heard of you guys, I think initially you guys are very focused on food service, but yeah. some of the news I've heard from the last six to 12 months is you guys are going into new markets. You mentioned yeah. cruise ships. Yeah. You guys are going into airplanes. So talk yeah. about some of these new markets you're going into. Yeah, I, I also always consider this whole space to be food service, anywhere yeah. where there's food, Freshly prepared food will expire uh, quickly and it's hard to plan for and thus there's a lot of food waste created. 
Now, indeed, in this in this in this cruise ship uh, space, I mean, by the way, there's so much food waste on cruise ships. Like, it's out of this world. The food quality is, is brilliant, but it's so hard to get the, the portions exactly right on the ship where you know this is the cornucopia of everything that you've ever wanted is on this cruise ship, and and sort of still balancing that with the food waste angle is is super hard. But food's very expensive to them, and they, it's very hard to plan for because they need to take everything for a week. When they're, when they're in this, in this home dock. Uh, so we had cruise ships that were wasting like 20,000 pounds of food per day. Uh, that, and we've significantly reduced uh, those levels. So super relevant for, for this cruise ship, but they work like classical commercial operations, I would say. They're still very, very big restaurants. Aviation, different ball game altogether, right? So sort of this with the, you, everyone's been in a plane, you see this car driving the, the, down the aisles. There's food probably food. a lot less wasted food there because like you're, you're, a lot of people aren't getting fed in the first place. Yeah. Mostly first class, it seems like. I guess international flights, you're seeing a lot more food move around, but yeah. talk about how you guys are changing. Are you changing behavior in the, on the planes or? Uh, it's not so much the behavior on the airplanes, it's uh, the, the behavior of the industry. The industry is very fragmented because okay. the same party that does the, the food provisioning on board, which would be your, your cabin crew, is not the same party that made that food on the ground, which is definitely an other party than the airliner itself. So it's super fragmented and it's not very well data connected. This results in that an average pl plane has about 30% overstocking with it in the air always there's about 30 percent more food than they'll ever serve they just know don't know what 30 percent so we're helping them out by actually tracking the consumption on those airplanes no one has data on that yet because it's a super tight space these these cabin crews have so much on their minds there they won't be able to score for what was being eaten and that worth that's what we're going to be solving with ai just counting those meals and counting what's returned and that will allow them to sort of significantly drive down the meals wasted, which has the financial upside, but also kerosene uh, uh, gallons saved, right? Everything oh yeah, that's, that's how they're heating the food, right? No, no, kerosene of the, like every, uh, they're super conscious about every kilo oh, or yeah. pound that every, even if uh, is, is airborne, yeah, yeah, yeah. because that's all kerosene burns that you okay. don't need. So Got this it. is just sort of their gasoline yeah. Uh, so it's not about heating that food, it's about surplus kilos got that it, you just don't it, want it. to transport. And, and this yeah, yeah, yeah. also applies to beverages, which we're also going to be counting, because there's also this myth that an average can of Sprite travels the world 20 times round, because it's just sort of always loaded and never, I mean, I love Sprite, but you know, yeah, yeah, as yeah. a metaphor, it's not being uh, uh, being ordered enough and it will travel the world. And that's, that's sort of uh, so many pounds traveling the world. They're just basically flying warehouses. Yeah. And we're going to reduce those kilos, those pounds, and that's going to significantly drive down aviation fuel usage. What are the ways that uh, food service environments can ultimately force behavior change on on consumers, because here's the thing, uh, if you're in a, a, a hotel, if you're in a casino, mm -hmm. um, and you're expecting food service on a cruise ship, um, people go into these environments wanting to eat a ton of food, and yep. then they're not really caring about what they throw into the garbage because they're on vacation. Yeah. So there has to be some tricks that these, uh, the, the cruise ships or the food service companies are, are doing once they have their data, your data in their hands. Yeah. What are they doing once they have your data to try and force consumers to waste less food? Yeah. So, of course, there's nudges, right? In the end, a cruise ship still wants to give their guests the experience of sort yeah. of everything they would ever want, and they'll, they're not going to stop doing that, and I see why. It's just you can in, uh, nudge a guest to sort of, if you get a plate this size, like a, a big plate the size of your head, then you're going to just stack so it up. smaller plates. Smaller plates, smaller cutlery. And then the guest, because this, this buffet is open all the time. So if a guest is really as hungry as they thought they were, they can come back and have a second portion. Now they're just overfilling their plates and it turned out they're not as hungry as they thought they would be. So that's sort of, okay. sort of nudge. That's a good one. But it's, it's important to note that 70% of the food being wasted in food service never even reaches a plate. So we're not dealing with... Uh, not, with we can't just blame the, 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 the vacationer or no. the, the hotel person that's staying at the hotel. It's, it's other stuff as well. Yeah, it's, it's, it's overstocking, it's okay. over preparation, it's all of the stuff, that, all of the surplus yeah. that never even leaves the kitchen or the okay. buffet. 
that's where the real big big win is for these for these operators. They that's where they can make the biggest savings, and that doesn't even touch their guest experience whatsoever. Everything that never leaves the kitchen is lost to everyone in this formula, in this equation. So that's where basically where we we add the most value. Like in the back of house, in their buffets, anything that has never even been seen by guests, that where that's where your biggest reduction potential is generally. Are you guys making any headway in what I call the food waste capital of the world, which I think has to be Las Vegas. I yeah. go to Las Vegas every year, yeah. and I always feel guilty there because I see so much food going into the garbage. Have you guys gotten any clients there? Are, are, are you making any headway in there? I believe we've just started up uh, one or two casinos, if I'm not mistaken, but I'm not so closely involved in my operations anymore yeah, yeah, with, yeah. with the current growth. But you make me feel guilty about this every year because you keep like rubbing it in Ooh, because it I believe you're right. It's crazy, it's crazy, Vegas is crazy. Yeah, so, I believe like, you're I, right. I help run a conference there and like, mm -hmm. I feel like I should be doing something more, but it's just yeah. people, I mean, it's just the nature of Vegas, right? And yeah. so anyway, and also I think part of it's just the rules. Yeah. Like, they have to throw so much food away. Yeah, so, yeah. Uh, well, we, we quite honestly, I mean, we're a pretty young company. We're 2019, but that was two years of COVID. So we basically only started our company 22 and we had to sort of focus. So we have a couple hundred hotels now in the US, but we only yesterday, not, not kidding, we hired our first representative. So now we actually oh, have US? a team. Yeah, oh, wow. uh, everything else was just me sort of talking oh, wow. to, to guys like yourself. And now we do have a couple hundred hotels, but uh, now we're actually starting our US operations. So I've no doubt we'll have a, uh, a Vegas representative sometime soon. And that's when the game's gonna I'll start. I'll stop making you feel guilty. I apologize yeah. about that. But, but what's else is in the future for Orbisk? Are you guys looking to uh, kind of continue the global expansion into new markets? Are you thinking about new products? What are, what are, what do you kind of see the company going over that year or two? So in the end, uh, I, my focus will be relentlessly on food waste end of chain. Uh, so uh, I'm not going to go all the way back to the farm, even though there's a lot to do there, but I f I f this is where I thrive. And at the end of the food chain is where the food will have most emissions, so my impact can be the biggest. Yeah. Having said that, the aviation space until recently was new to me. So I'm, I'm still you know, finding out stuff that's happening where, we, where our AI yeah. solution can add value. So we, we have a couple of technological parallel product lines that, that we're now opening up, but for some time to come, we will be focusing on food end of chain. Having said that, now we're basically only checking the waste, but we're currently integrating with parties to also get their menu cycles in, get their mm -hmm. guest numbers in, getting circumstantial data in, allowing us to see like full scope and see if we can actually forecast what not only what today went wrong, but what tomorrow will look like. Yeah. And that's, I think, gonna be the holy grail for uh, for our solution and for nipping food waste in the budget. All right, well, Olaf with Orbisk, thank you so much. I've had a great time talking to you. Thanks for coming on. Thanks, Mike. Yeah. Great to see you again, then.